actor and activist. TV fans know him from The Vampire Diaries and Netflix's V Wars. And now, thanks to his work in Washington, lawmakers know Ian Somerhalder as an advocate for the environment. Now the performer is hoping to break through the partisan gridlock and find common ground to help farmers and the planet. He's an executive producer of the new documentary, Common Ground. The Dust Bowl occurred 90 years ago, but we have one occurring today. It's happening again. Version 2.0. This is serious. We have to stop this. Nature stores the seed, waiting for the right conditions to appear. We need to stop wondering how we can green this planet. We're already doing it at a scale that can be done worldwide. Ian Summerhalder joins me now. Common ground. Tell me about it. Thank you. Thanks for that, that intro. And thank you for having us here. <clears throat> Common ground. People say, what is this? You know, I, I, you could almost argue that we are so divided uh, that the only thing that we have in common is the ground. The soil is our common ground. So people say, why are you doing this? What does this even mean? What is this regenerative agriculture and why should I care? And it's so simple. Regenerative ag is the use of planned grazing methods and using living, growing plants at scale to sequester enormous amounts of carbon dioxide, stick it back in the ground where it belongs. Now, when you do that, you, you know, feed all those vital microorganisms in the soil, healthier soil, healthier plant, healthier people, healthier planet. It's a, it's a really positive cascade of all the things that you can do when you build a regenerative uh, uh, agricultural economy, which is what we're doing right now. And that movement is happening. The Kiss the Ground movement is happening. And um, we launched the first film. It was a huge success. And we're back at it with Common Ground. Now, of course, this is a, a follow-up to 2020's Kiss the Ground. Now you have Common Ground. I have to say, though, a documentary about soil doesn't exactly like <laughs> scream sexiness to me. What got you interested in this topic? You, the, one of the greatest challenges is, is making soil sexy. Uh, but when you really dive into it, you realize a couple things. One of them that we learned you know, <clears throat> with Kiss the Ground is, listen, this isn't about politics. This is about policy. This is about people and people that can benefit from really good policies. And I know here in Washington, that's a, a hot topic at times, but this one really works because at the end of the day, the economics of regenerate, <clears throat> the economics of regenerative agriculture work. You get higher yields per acre, right? And we're in studio right now with, with, with Mr. Rick Clark, who uh, is in our film, and he's the one that actually does it. We talk about it, but he's doing it. And he was showing us how you can save a million, two million dollars on a farm per year, um, which really threw uh, uh, the congressional testimony uh, body when they asked why and how. He says, well, it's pretty simple. I don't use fertilizers, and I don't use pesticides. <laughs> so to a farmer, that doesn't make any sense. But through regenerative agriculture and using, uh, instead of monocultures, you're using a multitude of species to mimic nature. It's like what Alan Savory would say uh, when I was 12 years ago in Zimbabwe with him. It's what FDR said, instead of trying to buck nature, we're going to mimic nature. So when you mimic nature, nature thrives, we thrive. And so there's one interesting thing, when you start building a successful regenerative uh, economy, agricultural economy, a couple things happen. You build farmer prosperity. You're bringing farmers off of government subsidies that are laden with and mired in all sorts of controversy, but also big waste, right? You also uh, 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 revitalize fresh water stores. You, uh, you mitigate chemicals going into soil. You preserve topsoil. Then you also get a better yield. You get more nutritious food. So when farmers start making money, instead of the agrochemical companies, what happens? Their communities get better, their households get better, their tax bases go up, so then schools get better, water facilities get better, everything gets better because it's about community. So it's a really, really positive and amazing thing. Um, and when you wanna talk about like, you know, trade balance, you think about where the money is going. You follow the pipeline. If you think of, say there's 200, maybe 200 million acres of grain farmed in this country, roughly. Well, if you talk to Rick Clark, 
and you realize you could save $400 a year per acre, run those numbers and think about when you talk trade balance, where are we actually sending our money? Well, these are predominantly foreign owned companies. We can keep all of it here and then build it out globally. But this is what is so, this is what's so exciting. And this is why we're here and this kiss the ground movement is happening. So why we're here, this is about policy. Let's change the farm bill. And there's a, there are a couple, I think there's three, there's three bills that we can, that are on the table right now that could be so beneficial. And people say, well, where's this money? Where would this money be spent? Well, it's really simple. That farmer to, farmer to farmer interaction, interfacing, where farmers are teaching other farmers how to, 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 to convert or switch from conventional agriculture to, rege to, to regenerative agriculture. That needs to be funded. That's simple. Um, there are a number of ways that this money can be used that where the ROI, it, it's, Wall Street would give their right arm to have the ROI that you can get by just taking policy money and putting it into the hands of the farmers who know what needs to be done. It's pretty cool. You said earlier that this isn't about politics, but you're here in Washington. You've been to Capitol Hill before. Isn't everything yeah. about politics here? So it's an interesting thing you say that. If you want to look at it like, I guess there's a couple different ways to look at it. It's not always the macro, it's the micro. Every single farm is this, this sleeping, regenerative you know, machine, this beautiful, natural element that not only just feeds us, but can, you know, through the bio sequestration of carbon, we can stabilize our climate. We can stabilize a lot of things, but you build communities one community at a time. Think about how a gubernatorial election is won. I mean, it comes down to small counties in some rural place, in some state you've never even, you know, a rural county you've never even heard of. So when we invest in those tiny little mac micro areas, it builds the macro. So yes, everything here is about politics. And I humbly say, I think that's probably one of the biggest problems. <laughs> so again, this is not about politics. This is about policy. You know, legislators, uh, lawmakers can come together over good policies. It doesn't have to be about politics. And I think when they go back to their districts and they can stand there and they can look at their constituents, I mean, uh, they can look at the, the, the people in those districts and say, hey, listen, I didn't just go to Washington and yell at people about a bunch of stuff. I, we came back with an amazing uh, a, a way to build this community, because that's all I care about is right here. I care about you. You voted for me. I represent you, not the other way around. Um, and I think once they start to see that the money pipeline has been financing a lot of these representatives, unfortunately, um, they're not going to be happy. Because when you tell a farmer that they're going to actually make money, that they can get, you know, this is about pulling farmers off the drip, getting them away from the agrochemicals, the agrochemical companies. Um, with that, they're now profitable. Their kids go to great schools. They get to eat great food, and they get great everything, right? You're putting the, 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 the power in their hands. I got to tell you, I don't think any sort of hardline politic or any hardline issues are going to come in between them knowing that they could take care of their families better. So I think they're going to be a little angry, right? when they realize that the money pipeline um, that is flowing into these representatives has prevented them from living healthy, happy lives. Rather than having to, you know, every year save up for that quarter of a million or half million dollar loan they have to get from a bank because they have to put inputs in. That, that's primarily used in what? Fertilizers, pesticides, and diesel. Well, hey, if we can, if we can remove those costs, then our farmers and ranchers they're going to thrive. And when they thrive, we thrive, you know? In the movie, in the documentary, um, viewers are told, with much of the world's soil turned to dust, we have found ourselves in a race towards extinction. If the soil dies, we die. Mm -hmm. So is it all bad news? If we continue going in this trajectory, 
Uh, one could definitely argue. I mean, where we are headed right now um, is definitely not good. I mean, we could say that with a straight face. Um, actually, more of like a tear. But there is a tremendous amount of hope. And there is light at the end of the tunnel, and it is not a train coming at us. Regenerative ag can actually build us out of this, right? Especially with great policies, especially with reappropriating funds within the farm bill to give them that runway, to give them that ability to actually, you know, change their farms over. And so we need, yes, if we continue going the way we're going, we actually just simply won't have enough healthy topsoil left for food. So we released Kiss the Ground in 2020. It's now been about three years. When we released the film, I think we conservatively knew we have enough topsoil then for roughly about 60 harvests. Meaning, so when people say, well, what does that mean? Well, effectively, we have enough topsoil left for about 60 years of food, which all of our kids and grandkids are going to be running around in 60 years. We don't want that, right? So how do we mitigate that? How do we just reverse that? You know, one of the things, and we always talk about this at Kiss the Ground, we stopped using just the word sustainable. That means just maintaining the status quo. Of course, doing more with a little less. We now just use all the re-words. Regenerate, reclaim, reconstitute, reuse, recycle, rejigger, re-anything. But I think once the public uh, and the, the industries that run our agricultural systems start to use those words, then it, the, the, the axis will shift a great deal. So we definitely can't keep going the way we're going. And, and you saw in the clip, Gabe Brown, and you can ask Rick Clark as well, we are literally coming into the Dust Bowl 2.0. How with, you know, we can transplant organs. You know, we just sent a, a Tesla to Mars, but we can't prevent uh, Dust Bowl 2.0. So it's a really exciting time. I know there's a lot of doom and gloom. Um, and with the Kiss the Ground movement and with Common Ground, the idea is, listen, this is our common ground. We can stitch this country back together through the soil and through healthy food. And from that, everything gets better. Mental health gets better. Um, our medical systems will take a lot of that uh, pressure off of our medical systems. I mean, you know, we can go into crazy numbers, but if you're looking at the hundreds of billions of dollars spent on diseases um, nationwide that we, that wouldn't be here uh, if we didn't prop up things like subs subsidies and the agrochemical companies that are sort of keeping it down, right? So it's a, honestly, because we, we all we know the data, I see it, there's so much hope, but there's so much positive movement behind this. So it's not all doom and gloom. It's not all doom and gloom. Actually, this is the time where we, we, we take the reins and, and we go, but we do it together. But we need, you know, it can change with the office of the president. We need the congressional chambers to, to, to give um, that runway to, um, to the farmers and to the people who actually know what to do with it. And speaking of the office of the president, I heard you just wrapped up a trip to the White House earlier. Unbelievable. I, it, I, I say this with all respect. It's so great that everyone's at the UN General Assembly because it was so quiet. Um, and so we just got to, see, you know, just to have a quiet moment in some of those rooms and you see all the history and it just made me even more excited to get out here and start talking about this because this is literally um, how we change it all. When have you ever had, and I'm not trying to sound like in some weird, you know, BS, like culty Hollywood way. I'm talking, these are farmers. We're talking about real concrete solutions that are pretty much immediate. You can start tomorrow. If we just had the ability, and the farm bill is that catalyst. That is the, um, that is the mother hen that can feed us all. And so that's why we're excited, you know? Mm -hmm. What do you say to critics who might say, look, I don't need a bunch of, you know, rich celebrities, Hollywood types telling me to eat differently or do what I'm doing differently. I have other things to worry about. If you'll notice one thing, if you're complaining about, you know, rich celebrities who think they have a mouthpiece, watch the film and you'll see that we're in a studio narrating. 
It's the Rick Clarks and the Gabe Browns that are out in front of the camera doing the work. They're, they're celebrities in their communities, and they're definitely celebrities now, but they're the real, they're the real caretakers. So we are just an amplifier. Um, and by the way, who doesn't want to hear Woody Harrelson's voice? So there's a, when you talk about critics, think of the source. Think of what drives them. Think of who finances them. Think of who writes the checks for them. And then I think you can get sort of, because for me, anyone who wants great things in our country, especially to get our nation off of the drip of agrochemical companies, um, when you talk about building farmer prosperity and building a really great, you know, listen, it's happening now. We are literally building the single largest carbon capture food economy from the Carolina coast to the California coast. It's happening right now, whether you want it to or not. So the best thing critics can do is actually just watch the film and dive in and then say, oh, these guys are real. This actually works. And then look at the, 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 the diversity of the types of farmers coming into, you know, this is the, uh, this is the 10 second version because this is a really cool number and, and don't quote me on the exact numbers, but I want to say there's about a billion acres farm in the US, right? We're about 900 something million acres. There's about a 1 million people who control all of that. And about 70% of that are white males, probably 70 plus years old. So when I say that statistic, people get all up in arms. Ah, that's why we're, that's why we're in this situation. I say, no, 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 man, chill. You know what I see? I see opportunity. Because those guys are going to be cycling out very soon. And the amount of new uh, uh, energy coming into the agricultural space right now, this vast, diverse group of people, and, and you see it all the time, Rick. You see how many, just how many new people are coming into it. The amount of uh, the injection of energy and youth and diversity coming into the agricultural space in this country is something we've never seen. And it is a literal movement revolution. Um, and it's not some like, you know, Capitol Hill thing. This is happening in the middle of the country. It's happening in Texas, it's happening in Indiana, it's happening in Nebraska, South Dakota. That's not, that's not DC. But let's not let that stuff get caught up in politics. Let's just give it great policy. When you're meeting with a lot of these lawmakers on Capitol Hill, what are you telling them? Same thing we're talking about. Hey, listen, it's no skin off your teeth unless, unless you just get a lot of money from agrochemical companies, which a lot of them are. And that, I think, is what's going to have the most profound switch, meaning like, this is like a, if you, if you change your ways, the waves of change will be so significantly positive. Just get farmers off the drip of the agrochemical companies. And if you just listen to Rick Clark and you listen to Gabe Brown and you listen to these guys and gals that, that know how to do it, we just win. We win. And it's cool. I mean, and there's money to be made. You know what I mean? Like, there's money to be made. When you, the economics of it are just better. Regenerative ag produces more money. It's just so cool. Very serious question for you. You have an extensive, intimate knowledge of vampires. You now have a lot of experience in D.C. on Capitol Hill. Are there any vampires in Congress? You know, I think they're all drinking vervain tea. And they are unable to be persuaded by any of us who, who want to do the good stuff. So I always, everyone always say to me, hey, if you could have that power, you know where you compel people, where you look at them in the eye and you make them do whatever you want them to do, what would you do with that? And I said, man, I would go straight to Washington and I would sit and have um, some really significant meetings and I would get them to just make better decisions. And it would be such a great superpower. 
But for right now, the only superpower we have is with Kiss the Ground is building that movement and with Regenerate America, which is the, the, the regeneration arm of Kiss the Ground and building that out. But the superheroes um, are the Rick Clarks and the Gabe Browns and all the people in this film who actually are doing the work. And I'm telling you, see this movie. See Kiss the Ground first. It's on Netflix, it's so easy to get. I mean, you can get it on your cell phone right now. And then Woody narrates the whole thing, which is cool. Um, that's just such a great melodic voice. And then drop in to Common Ground, and what we're gonna get is, you know, we're gonna be able to release this. We're gonna start small, but we're gonna do a wide theatrical release, which most documentaries don't do. And then we're gonna blow out of the water. And the last thing, um, and I wanted to save this for the Hill, that, and this is, again, I'm not trying to create some incendiary moment, our big call to action, we need 100 million acres converted to regenerative right now. Of the roughly billion acres uh, farmed, at that 10% threshold, we know it will only go forward. It's never gonna go back, right? The problem is, uh, and, we, and I won't name any names, the problem is when we were bringing the second film to the big major streamers, they, they want to censor the film. They're, they're, they're too afraid to talk about the agrochemical businesses. They wanted us to censor our film. And we said no. So we are now realizing a big call to action is not only joining 100millionacres.com, or is that org? Dot com, I think. Dot org, 100millionacres.org, which Josh is in New York right now, um, taught, launching that, and we're launching this. The big call to action is don't censor common ground. Why are you trying to censor a film? Why are you trying to censor the Rick Clarks of the world on a national stage? This is, this is literally, and not to sound like cultish, this is our savior. This is how we protect future generations and our economy. Don't censor the movie. Don't censor common ground. That's not fair to anyone. Our children need this film to live. And, these, and the big media conglomerates, and, and uh, will obviously go unnamed, they're trying to get us to, to censor our film, and we just won't do it. In what way are you saying they're trying to censor it? They are afraid to go up against Monsanto. They're afraid to talk about things like, uh, you know, different types of food products and plant-based products and things coming into the fold at scale that aren't what they seem. And they're upset about it and they want to censor the movie and we just absolutely refuse. So if, so if we, uh, we're gonna release this in theaters and if we have to literally release this film uh, on like my Facebook page, we'll do it. We don't, if, if streamers and, and big companies are gonna censor our film, then we will release it every way we can without them. Going back to Congress, which is so fractured right now, I don't have to tell you. Um, what are you talking the, about? The no documentary, one. it does strike, a, I'd say, an optimistic tone at the end, saying that both sides have seemed to come together a bit um, on this issue. So what, what are you hopeful about going forward? I have tremendous amounts of hope. What I have hope for is when people see this movie and they look, they watch the footage and they realize no matter what walk of life they come from, what ethnicity they are, they realize that they have a place in history. And we really are on the right side of history on this one. That's what I'm so hopeful for. People are waking up and Kiss the Ground is the thing that brought that to life, really, because obviously, they're, the Alan Savories of the world have been doing this. I mean, I, I got to spend time in, in, um, in, Botswana, or in Zimbabwe with, with Alan 12 years ago. I was very fortunate enough, unknowingly, I shot the initial footage of this film uh, unknowingly 12 years ago in Zimbabwe. The movement is happening. Kiss the Ground has woken people up. Regenerate America is already all over the streets and in farms. It is happening as we speak. That is hope. Because in life, if you think about it, we need two things majorly, right? We need hope, and then 
We need that one single word that no one ever talks about, no one ever teaches, and I think it's the most important word in the human language, right? Other than love, obviously. That word is purpose. We're, that's all we're searching for as human beings. We go through great lengths. Some people never find it. And so we don't teach this in school, but there's no formula that they talk about. There is. There's a little bit of a formula to it. You find purpose in life, which is the thing that sets you free, when you marry skill with passion, right? So when you bring together the things you're good at with the things you love, then you find purpose, and then boom, your whole world opens up to you. And I think you're seeing people now who come from agricultural backgrounds that were more conventional, who are now seeing the light, and now they're moving into regenerative ag, and they're switching their farms, you know, farms they've had in their family for 100, 150 years. That is hope. That's what's cool. And we will build it one community at a time. It's, it, honestly, this is, I think, the most exciting time in history, um, particularly in agricultural history in this country. And um, no one is going to stop us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on.